Good morning guys and welcome again. Today I'm going to show you how to build a bookshelf that's not just a regular bookshelf, it's a secret door to a hidden room. This is the perfect project for those who love reading and want to add a little mystery to their home. Plus, it's a great way to impress your friends and family with your woodworking skills. So let's get started. Firstly, I created the plan using the free version of SketchUp. With the plan I had made, I knew in advance all the parts I needed and also their dimensions. For the bookshelf and the frame of the door, I used a MDF board and a free layer board with a thickness of 90 mm. I used the MDF for the door frame and some side pieces of the bookshelf while the free layer board was used mainly for the back of the bookshelf. After I marked the size of all the pieces, I used my table saw to cut them all from the board. Cutting such a large board on a small table saw can be tricky, so I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you have experience. You should not do it the way I did either, it was certainly not the safest what I did. For the 45 degree angles I used my Japanese saw, because my miter saw has seen better days and precise cuts are no longer really precise. I also cut the length of the pieces with the Japanese saw, although this step was probably unnecessary because the length did not have to be that accurate. Then I started assembling the bookshelf. I used my new pocket hole jig for the first time to screw all the pieces together. For those who have always wanted to try pocket holes but don't want to buy the most expensive jig right away, I really can recommend this set. I will put the link in the description. I also added some wood glue for extra reinforcement. I also screwed the front of the bookshelf together with pocket holes and screws and what I learned there is that you should always use clamps when using pocket holes. Because the screws on the pocket holes are set at a slight angle, which can cause the workpiece to shift slightly. Because I didn't want any visible seams or edges on the front, I used wood filler. It's like a type of wood putty. To apply the putty, I just used a standard spatula. The downside of this process is that it took several hours to dry before I could sand it. After that I used a spray can nozzle attachment with a filler primer to even out any remaining bumps and imperfections. Ok, let's move on to another topic for a moment. When I started YouTube half a year ago, I thought I could easily upload a video every week. Because that can't be that much work, right? Well, actually, it's a hell of a book. So, if you are still watching this video, I would really appreciate a click on the sub button. While the front was drying, I went back to the bookshelf. Once again, I used my table saw to cut the free layered board. As mentioned at the beginning, the back wall of the bookcase will take up most of the free layered board. However, there was enough left over for two shelves and a side panel. Besides the MDF and the free layered board, I also used some leftover pieces of older furniture I had lying around. After cutting everything to the right size, I started sanding the back wall, because pine is a bit rougher than MDF. Otherwise, you would notice a difference between the MDF and the free layered board after painting. What you can't see right now is how I taped off the edges of the back wall and the spots where the shelves will be. I did this because I wanted to glue the shelves in place with wood glue. Subsequently, I spray painted everything with primer. 
Some people are probably wondering why I didn't just paint the bookcase at the very end. Well, that's what I've been asking myself in the meantime as well. In hindsight, to paint it beforehand was probably not the best idea. But hey, don't we all have stupid ideas once in a while? <laughs> Bagel, no! Bagel! Bagel! After the primer was dry, I sanded everything gently with 240 sandpaper to reduce any fine bumps. Then I used the paint ruler to apply premium white undercoat to every single piece of the bookshelf. Maybe the step wasn't necessary, but I really wanted a perfect result, so I decided to take this extra step. The undercoat took about 24 hours to dry. 24 hours later. The next day I started by applying white satin finish premium paint from a spray can as the final coat. After a short time, the problems started. The spray paint didn't mix well with the undercoat and created some extreme wrinkles. I have no idea why this happened, since the undercoat and the paint were from the same brand. This meant that I had to sand everything again. <laughs> Because the spray cans are not particularly cheap or eco-friendly, I switched to paint that can be brushed or rolled from a can. This also reduced the amount of pollution in the air, which can be a problem without ventilation, like in my workshop. However, this type of paint takes about 24 hours to fully dry, while spray paint only takes an hour or less. Once all the pieces were dry, I removed the tape. Or I tried it, at least. The tape was actually very sticky at some places. Afterwards, I switched back to the front of the bookshelf. I still needed to paint it. I tried spray paint again, although it didn't work the first time I tried it. I didn't use the undercoat this time and prayed that the undercoat was causing the problem. I wanted the spray paint for the front so badly because it was the only way to get a nearly perfect even coat of paint. And this time the paint god thankfully didn't crack. Quick painting conclusion, I hate painting. Once everything was dry, I screwed it all together and used wood glue as additional reinforcement. For the door function I used 60 kg heavy duty hinges. Because the hinges take place inside the door frame I had to mill out a matching hole. I was worried that the pine frame might not be strong enough to support them. So I decided to mill a hole big enough to glue a piece of plywood in it. Always make sure that your router bit is tight enough, otherwise this can happen. The router bit detached during the milling process. As a result, I ended up milling much deeper than intended and even completely through the frame. 
No, God, please, no, no, no! I didn't have any wood left that was long enough to replace this piece. So I had to find a way to fix this problem. So I continued milling with my router, but of course this time I made sure that the bit was firmly tight enough. Afterwards I glued the plywood to the frame and then I filled the hole on the other side with 5 minute epoxy glue. And after that I used filler putty and some filler paint which I was able to sand down perfectly after it dried. After finishing the bookshelf and the door frame, two more steps were still missing. An additional wheel to balance the weight of the shelf and a door's closing or opening mechanism. Ok, first to the wheel. I marked center on the wheel and welded a 10 cm long fretted rod on it. This fretted rod would later be used to adjust the height of the wheel. And spoiler alert! It worked really well. I mounted the wheel on a few pieces of plywood on the opposite side of the hinges. Next I had to work on the door mechanism. I wanted to use a switch disguised as a book for this purpose. So I bought a fake book on Amazon and reinforced it with some plywood on the bottom and the back. For this I had to cut out the pages of the book a little. I mounted a small hinge on the bottom to make the book foldable and a steel cable was attached to a small lever on the back. Following this I drilled a hole in the back of the bookcase in which I glued a thicker piece of steel pipe later on. The tube serves to prevent the steel cable from cutting into the wood. Then I connected the steel cable to an opener and stuck the spring between the hole and the opener so that the opener would close by itself. Before I installed the door frame, there was one last step I had to do. I needed to cut out the grooves for the hinges in the bookshelf. So I glued a wooden slat on the inner side of the shelf to get more space for the hinges. Then I used my Makita router for the cutting process. But then disaster struck. I realized that I had made a big mistake. The lower hinge was smaller than the upper hinge, which meant that the groove I had made for it was way too big. So I had to improvise a bit. I filled up the groove with some leftover plywood and then I cut out a new groove for the lower hinge. It was really a bit of a pain, but I finally could install the hinges. In the last step all I had to do was install the bookshelf. First things first, I mounted the door frame. I made sure to align it properly and then clamped it in place. Then I used 100mm screws 
to secure the frame from the inside out. And just to be extra sure I added some mounting glue to the hinge side. Next up it was time to position the shelf. My wife helped me out with this step but I won't be showing it on camera because I want to respect her privacy. Once we had the shelf in place I attached the hinges to the frame. And finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, my wife got to fill up the shelf with all her favorite books and then she added some decorative touches. And voila, we now have a bookshelf that's also a secret door. I mean, how cool is that? Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more do-it-yourself goodness.